All right, Steeler fans, it is time for, I guess you could call us a Monday morning conversation. It's one of those rare in-season Mondays where we don't have a game, we don't have winners and losers and all that fun stuff. But I, I teased this at the beginning of the show. It's it's a one-time return of the Stat Geek. That's Dave Schofield. What's up, Dave? How's it going? It's going all right. Sorry that I couldn't work it out to do it on Friday like you had originally hoped, but uh, we had family time last Thursday that kind of made it more important. But uh, I'm glad I can come on here and talk some numbers. Yeah, because I... I love your show, Pittsburgh Standard Time, what you do with Craig Benefit every Thursday morning. And if you haven't checked that out, please do so. But I I, I always am like, man, I do miss some of the number stuff that Dave used to talk about. So I was like, this would be a good time. It's a bye week. It's it's at the midway point, as, as midway as you can get with an odd number of games. I was like, this would be a great time to kind of take a an evaluation of where the Steelers stack up against their, well, the rest of the league, technically, in terms of offensive production, defensive production, or lack thereof. And then I know that you did some digging and found some interesting numbers as well. So, Dave, I'm going to give you the ability. Where, where do you want to start? you want to start on offense or defense? I will start wherever you would like to start, Jeff. Well, I always start on offense. I like offense. So, out of the offensive numbers that you looked up, and, and let's just start with rankings. If you want to run through some of the rankings, feel free. Uh, and then I want to ask you, was there any of these that stood out as – whether it was an outlier or something that was like, wow, like I didn't realize that. So go ahead and uh, read off some of those rankings for the Steelers in terms of their offensive production. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Steelers are sitting 16th in points. It's or it's sorry, in yards at 328.1 yards per game, uh, whether it's 14th or 15th in points is where they are. Cause it depends we're getting kind of a mix of stuff right now because there was a Thursday night game right. and some of those numbers come in and, and throw that off. It really all depends on where you look at it. Most of these numbers I was looking at was before uh, the the week started, week nine, where the Steelers were on by, where I had them at 15th, but other places had them 14th. And to me, those two rankings, some people like yards better because that's what the NFL uses. Others say, hey, points are what really matter. And, and I get both ideas but for the Steelers to be in the top half in both of those rankings they haven't been there since 2018 where they've been wow. there in both and they've only been in the top half in one of those two since 2018 they were 12th well th that's to finish the season mind you they've only finished in the top half one in, in one year and that was in 2020 and that was in points they finished 12th in points so other than that, the Steelers haven't had that those kind of numbers since you were talking. Well, you would have to have both Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown as part of the offense. That's the last time the Steelers came anywhere close to those kind of rankings. So that's the first thing that jumped out at me. Well, hold but on. The, before, you, okay. before you go any further, where do you stand in terms of what do you look at? Yards, points? Do you, does one, do you favor one over the other? I think you kind of have to look at both of them together. You kind of mix mix the two and taking them both into account. So, for example, I, I, I gave last year when it came to defense. I said I felt that Kansas City was the best defense in the league because they ranked number two in both categories. And the team that was ahead of them in each category was ranked further down in the other one. So, therefore, combining both of them together – you know, they, they had they had the best ranking in the NFL as far as I was concerned. I so I, I think to just look at one over the other, you can do it to kind of spin it any way you want to because you can always spin numbers the way you want to if you yeah. if that's what you're doing. But to me, I I like looking at each of them and to see if there's a major difference between the two. If I had to pick, I would go points. If I if I was you know forced right. to choose, but I I think that the two numbers together paint a better story. That's fair. That's fair. So go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, it's fine. But one thing I found interesting is the Steelers are really not all that much better in passing yards than they were last year at this point. Actually, they're worse. The Steelers are averaging 190 passing yards per game, which is 25th in the NFL, where a year ago, after week eight, they were at 192 passing yards a game and they were ranked the exact same 25th. Huh. So that's pretty interesting that, that that wasn't much of an improvement. But I also think that's a byproduct of 
when you're winning games late, you're not having to constantly try to throw the ball and come back and win, which is why they also have are much improved in in run offense. They're averaging 138.1 rushing yards a game. That's eighth in the NFL. And if you compare it to last year at this time, they weren't even averaging 80 yards a game. So they're averaging almost 60 yards more per game. And that's a difference of being eighth this year. They were 28th in the league at this point last year, which I think is kind of crazy. That is, that is crazy. I, I never would have guessed. But then again, when you look at Justin Fields in the first six games, yes, not as prolific throwing the ball as say the last two weeks with Russell Wilson. Um, what about running the ball? Is that markedly better? I would assume so. What running? In that's terms of yards just... per game. Yeah, but do you compare it to last year? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, why I say I'm... almost 60 yards more. It's interesting. That's interesting. What well, what else stood out on the offensive side of the uh, football? Well, the Steelers are getting sacked more this year than they are last year. Hmm. Um, they, had, they had surrendered 19 sacks, at, um, and that was only – now, granted, that was only through seven games because uh, they had a, an earlier bye last year in 21. Right. So it's really more around the same, um, and they're not turning the ball over. Got some pretty other interesting numbers offensively. The Steelers are, well, that's more of a team stat, but you got to score points to have a larger margin of victory. The defense have been doing their their part for, for years, but now that you're getting that complimentary offense, the Steelers currently are have a have a margin of victory of 8.5 per game. So that you know that's that sounds pretty nice. They haven't had that since 2010. And they haven't had a positive margin of victory since 2020. Even though they've had winning records, they've had games where they lost pretty big and won one fairly close. Where this year it's much different. So you, you brought up the turnovers, comparing that to last season. That, uh, correct, the Steelers have five turnovers this year? Yes. How many did they have at last season at this time? Do you know that off the top of your head? At this time last year, they yeah. had eight. Oh. Which was pretty – which was which was top ten last year. Yeah. So they've, they're have they they're doing even better this year, um, which I, I think they're going into the week they were ranked fourth. I'm sure the differential, we'll get to that when we get to the defensive side, talking about takeaways too, but I'm, I'll be curious to see how that matches up from last year as well. Uh, okay, what else? Did anything else stand out? Um, I don't have this compared to last year, but I can tell you right now that the Pittsburgh Steelers, through the first eight weeks of the season, they are ranked 28th in the NFL in red zone efficiency. They are 46.4%. So that's that's some place that they really need to improve on uh, when they get the ball down there. So that's part of the reason why the Steelers are doing better in yards. They're moving the ball down the field, but they're not always producing them into points. But much more in the second half of games than they are in the first half of games because they are averaging 15.1 points per game in the second half, which going into the week, uh, that had them tied with the Eagles in the league of how many points he scored in the second half, 15.1 a game. It's, it's also interesting when you look at the narratives of these, particularly the quarterbacks entering the season, Russell Wilson had great red zone statistics last year for the Denver Broncos. If I do recall correctly, Justin Fields has always been known to struggle. It, I, I don't know, Dave, you could agree or disagree. The, the red zone efficiency has really dropped off since Russell Wilson has come in. And I think it's not because he's not reading the field properly or anything like that. He doesn't have the athleticism that, that Justin Fields has. And a lot of Justin Fields, the conversions that he saw were with his legs or yeah. <laughs> him rushing well, the football. I think that's a big difference maker. Yeah, I, I will say this. The first game, I'm pretty sure under Russell Wilson, they were four of six. You are team. correct. You are correct. But then they were 0 for 4 yeah. in the last game. And usually that's what's fresh in your mind. That's why we got people talking about, oh, the Steelers run defense. Don't worry. We'll talk about the run defense <laughs> when we get to defense. Um, but, but if you, so he's only 40%, yeah. but it started off hot. You know, could that be teams get tape on it? Could just be si situational, circumstantial. Um, let's get more than a two game sample to really break down those numbers a little bit more. But, 
as, as a whole and, and their execution, if you're just looking for something to build on, that's that's something I would use as a point of emphasis during sure. the bye week if I was the Steelers coaching staff. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Was the Broderick Jones face mask in the red zone or was that outside of the red zone that negated the touchdown? It was in the red zone when okay. it happened. I'm so, I so am, that, that I, I, I would a, want to put a number on it. I'm, I'm very, I'm fairly certain of that. So that would have put a touchdown on the board and that would have given him a conversion. Yes. In that game. And, and George, then you think and about George Pickens, Pickens getting up, one that he didn't down, get his foot yeah. down. Yeah. Because every, every red zone trip that the Steelers had last game ended in a field goal. So yeah, all those ones that they didn't make and settle for field goals, they weren't in the red zone at that. All right. So, did you look at third down conversion percentage? Because you you, I, you love you love it when I I've, I've eased <laughs> off on them, Dave. I I listened to you. I eased off on them a little bit this season. I haven't put them on the losers list, and they don't get to fifty percent. I'll be honest with you. When it came to third down percentage, I was I was looking, but the biggest problem that I was having was I couldn't sort it in a way to where I where I, I cut it off before week eight. I was struggling finding it in in that um, okay. correct way. I can tell you that I, I can give you some numbers, but the ranking might not not be spot on. But but the Steelers, their third down conversion rate, what, what do you think they are? I bet they're right around 40%. You were pretty darn close. Yeah. 39.4. That's it. That's pretty yes. close. <laughs> now, the the only games, the Thursday games were were counted in this, but none of the ones from Sunday when I'm looking at the numbers right now. And that has them ranked 14th highest in the NFL. So it's not bad. It's barely in the top half. So, I mean... The Atlanta Falcons going into this week, they had exactly a 40% third down conversion rate, um, as did the New York Jets. Well, that was after this week because right. they already played. Um, and so did the Dallas Cowboys. All three of those tied for 10. So if you get a 40% conversion rate on third downs, you're in the top 10 of the NFL. And That's there's crazy. two that are over 50. Do you know who they are? Two over 50%? Yes. Uh, Detroit. That's uh, actually, it's not Detroit. Detroit's not well. I mean, they're pretty good. They're 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 at forty two point okay. nine. They go for okay. a lot of fourth down too. Remember, which means he did. That's true. That's a, that's a good point. I'll, I'll um, give you a hint. Uh, okay, they they will be facing off tonight. So this is uh, well, let's for Minnesota? Monday night football. No Monday night football. Oh Monday night football. <laughs> We're recording this on Sunday for those that don't know. I'm trying to <laughs> Monday, Jeff. I'm doing my best. I don't know who the Monday night game is. Really? Dang it. That uh, would be the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, so is it the Chiefs? The the yeah, the Chiefs are second at 50.5, and the Buccaneers are first at 52 at 52.5. So the so, NFL is the two best third down offenses going head to head on Monday night football. Yes, and they are just they are just above 50% conversion rate. Wow, there you go. Yeah. Did you see anything else offensively, Dave, before we go to the defensive side of the ball that stuck stuck out? Um, I couldn't compare it to last year's just be, or, or to previous years just because it was difficult to I had to count it up myself anyway. Remember the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'd like to see them get a little bit more settled in the second half. They've had nine different people start on the offensive line this season through eight. That's games. great. Easy. That's crazy. Was it what yeah. two years ago when Mason Cole missed like two snaps and that was the only offensive lineman that missed any time? Yeah, at all? oh no, he, was that... I think it was more than two snaps, but it was like it, it wasn't even at a half of a game. It was like yeah, he had to come out in the second half of a game, and that was it. I mean, and no, no one for the Steelers offense has played every snap this year. Uh, the closest is Dan Moore Jr. And he missed he missed at least one snap against the Giants. Yes, and honestly, I. I think they I think he missed nine other one of those games that was might have been the Raiders game. It was a blowout. People didn't even notice that him and him and Samalu were given like the last two drives off. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. All right, man. Let's go to defense then. I'm excited yes. to see to hear some of these numbers because as the offense has picked up their production, then they're averaging 23 something points per game. The defense has been doing their job. 
What did you notice on the defensive side of the ball? All right. Well, this this is one of those where what's more important, yards or points? To me, defensively, there's more of a separation there because especially as a Steelers fan, we know that the Steelers sometimes like to do that bend but don't break mentality because they'll give up yards as long as they don't give up points. That's been kind of their philosophy. So the Steelers are are going into week nine before the games that were all they're all played on Sunday. The Steelers were ninth in the NFL with 310.3 yards surrendered in total. They're second in the NFL in points surrendered per game, which is 14.9. The only one that's better is the Chargers. Yeah. Who I think still did pretty well at, in, in week nine. They did. How much did they end up? That game was a blowout. I didn't even look at the final score. 10 or 10 or 13. Yeah. It was, it was one something. Of one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns is who we're referring to. Yes. Um, so, so that jumps out now. What do you think is better, the Steelers' run defense or their pass defense? Statistically? Yeah. The run defense. Yes, definitely. They're yeah. fourth to the NFL, only giving up 90.5 yards per game. And I know you, you and I both kind of laughed about <laughs> Doug Whaley on, on the Steel City Insider and Jim Wexel giving him yes. a hard time, which he should have. I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm like, Talk about not paying attention to what's going on. The Steelers had back-to-back games where they didn't even surrender 60 yards rushing. Then they had a game, a one-off game, that it almost seemed like they were willing to give up rushing yards as long as they didn't let the passing game get going. And all of a sudden, oh, there's this big concern about rushing yards. They really got to worry about it. I'm like, it's one game, okay? One game. Two is a pattern, but it's only been one game. So really, really good job there. Passing uh 219.8 yards that's actually 22nd in the nfl hmm. that's not unless not i unless i looked at it backwards and uh that's and i was looking from the from the bottom versus the top but uh i can't <laughs> no because i i've i've had a tendency to do that before um, but 219 yards is what yeah, they're giving up which doesn't sound like very much no well but everyone's saying that the running game is coming back into the national football league Mm-hmm. And so 219 doesn't sound bad, but I agree with you about the, the one-off. And even though Cam Hayward said after the game, you know, it's on tape now and everyone's seen it. Yeah. But it, I agree with what you said until it starts to become a pattern and it's only one game. I'm going to hold, hold off judgment in yeah. terms of the run defense. Yeah. And, and I did confirm that they, they are 22nd in the NFL um, going into this, this past week. So yeah, the the passing it, it has really turned into more more rushing yards than the past years. Because I would think, yeah, you're keeping keeping them under two twenty. That that sounds like a really good yeah. pass defense, doesn't it? It, it does to me. Yeah. I mean, if someone said, "Hey, your your, your run defense is going to give up ninety, and your pass defense is going to give up two twenty, you're thinking, "Shoot, this is going to be one of the top defenses in terms of yards surrendered." And man, I guess. In terms of yeah. ad rankings on the past side, that's not the case. So yeah, well, last year at this time they were giving up two forty five, which had them ranked twenty seventh. Now rushing, it's funny because I, I I made this point uh, when I was laying out these numbers before. I wasn't looking as much at this year's comparing it to last year, but you look at last year's numbers and it just goes to show what not having Cam Hayward did. They were twenty yeah. seventh in the NFL against the run through eight weeks of the season last year, giving up 137.1 yards a game. Holy cow. They were 30th in the league in yards total. Now, 18th in points, because that's kind of what the Steelers, you know, like I said, but don't break. But yeah, but uh, also the Steelers are down in sacks this year. You know, last year through eight weeks, which was only seven games, they had 22. This year they have 19. Okay. So... And, and they and they're holding more leads, so you would think that they would just be able to to tee off and 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 rush the passer late in games, but they they've got a lot of hits and a lot of pressures. They just haven't got. A hold I would I'd love to see. You said how many how many sacks they have this year? Nineteen. Nineteen. I would love That's to see the dist- in the NFL. Right, the distribution of the sacks between the outside linebackers and anyone else on the defense, and the reason why. I don't feel like the Steelers are sending any pressure outside their front 
front that their defensive front. We'll just call it that because people say front four, whatever. Uh, I just don't feel like they're doing that at all. And I don't know if they're saving that, but TJ Watt, he's got what? Six, six and a half. Who do you you think second? I think Nick Herbig is second. Nick Herbig's actually fourth. He's got two and a half. All right. So then Alex Highsmith is probably second. Alex Highsmith and Cam Hayward are tied for second with three sacks. And so then what? The rest just have one? Uh, we Larry Ogunjobi has one and a half. Then okay. the other ones are Landon Roberts with one, Montrevious yeah. Adams with one, and Beanie Bishop with a half. That's according to Pro Football Reference. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I remember when Patrick Queen was signed in as a free agent. Everyone said, man, this guy, he's a great blitzer. He's athletic. He can really shoot the gap. And he, they just haven't done it. I don't think that he's doing it repeatedly and like running into a brick wall. They're just not blitzing him a lot. And I, I just wonder if there's a reason why. I, I just wonder why they're not sending extra pressure anywhere. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right. What else stood out, Dave? Anything else well, on the defense? They've side? got the 15 takeaways yep. com- compared to the five turnovers. So that had them as a plus 10 coming into week nine with into the bye week, which only had them one behind Buffalo that was plus eleven. I'm not sure exactly which end of the margin they ended. I know the Buffalo turned the ball over some uh, yesterday, but I I didn't bother to look at the margin. But it's not that important. It's more about what the Steelers are doing. So that's that's been real. That's been helping a lot. Um, Here's one that's kind of I have some cool combination ones. Sure, but here here's here's a defensive one. How many points per game do you think they're giving up in the second half? In the second half, yes. Well, they haven't given up any third quarter points yet, have they? They've given up none in the third quarter. That's what I thought. And then the fourth quarter, I mean, my gosh. Uh, I'm going to say they've given up a total of 18. Okay. So I have the average. So, of course, (laughs) that means real quick I've got to figure out how your total is. Um, So – it, it's it's significantly more than that. I mean, think about that. What they do um, against against Dallas, they gave up fourth quarter points. That's true. Um, against against the Giants, they gave up fourth quarter points. But still, they're only averaging five point six points in the fourth quarter. Which, when you average that over both, it's five. You know, that's five point six right. total in the second half, which is which is tops in the NFL by a decent bit. Um, Going into the week, remind you. Right. Man, I, I just can't believe third quarter they have not surrendered a, a point this yeah, entire that's, season. That is that's remarkable. Just That's kind of strange if you think about it. It's just like, is that one of those those things that... Well, there have there have been drives. <laughs> there 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 have been drives. I know this for a fact because the, the recap highlight article I do where the third quarter is ended as a team is getting ready to put points on the board. So they're yeah. already in field goal range and it's just the time runs out. And so the points get tacked into the fourth quarter instead of the third quarter. Yes. So they, they have, have been early situation. fourth quarter points. Some Exactly. So yeah. When you all look right. at it as the entire second half, because you don't have to worry about just all you're doing is flipping the, the field. Right. Um, that's a decent way to look at it. And, and 5.6 for the second half is pretty impressive. Absolutely. All right. Any other any other stats you want to go over? Well, yeah. How how do you think the Steelers are doing penalty wise this year? I would say they're probably middle of the road. I, I think they started off really bad. The, the early part of the season was just atrocious. I remember that. But I think they've kind of leveled. I'd say about middle of the road. Yeah. So here's something that I looked up. I rather than just look at all oh, how much is called against you. How about looking at penalties from a from a plus minus standpoint? What do you mean? Meaning, how many, how much are the Steelers being called for penalties versus how much their opponents are being called for penalties oh, in every game? So, like yardage gained and lost from penalties. yes. I would say that they're actually on the plus side, that they're actually getting more yardage. They are on the plus side. Okay. So much so, um, they're second in the NFL going into week nine. It was. 
at, at plus 115 yards overall. Wow. That's remarkable. And they haven't had a lot of like, you know, you think about DPIs that is going to, there's a spot foul. They haven't had a lot of those how, that I can how, think how, of. How many defensive pass interference did you think they've had this year? Like that, that on, so against the, t- the opposition is what you're asking. Yes. Two. That's low. It's probably four. I don't know. <laughs> nope. You lose. Price is right, rules. Why? One accepted defensive pass interference. Oh, shoot. That's it? Just one. Isn't that crazy? Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. Yeah, one. And there was – then there was – uh no, they didn't even have any legal – no, remember, accepted. There, I know there was at least one called on Joey Porter Jr. where he still caught – the guy still caught the ball and they didn't take penalty. Correct. So yeah. they have more – they have twice as many offensive pass interference than defensive pass interference. <laughs> Ah, uh, the pick play. I love it. That's yeah. really interesting stuff, man. I, didn't, I didn't, never would have thought just one, just one defensive yeah. pass interference. That might change. And, and actually, I, 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 I misquoted. I said 115 that they were plus. It's actually 117. Ah, that's okay. No, I'll, those, for, those I'll, for, yards, I'll forgive the two yards. <laughs> but I mean, they're way behind the Rams who were at plus 195 going, in, going into this past week. Wow. That's so, insane. Yeah. That's good stuff. What else you got? Anything? Oh, let's see. What else do I have? Um, I don't know. Um, do, do, do. How about uh, how about some special teams? Yes. Going into week nine, Chris Boswell was second in the NFL in points with 85. The only person he was behind was the kicker for the Washington Commanders with 88. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. 85 the Steelers. Points. The Steelers also lead the NFL in blocked field goal percentage. Yes, that is a thing. They they blocked they have blocked thirteen point three percent of field goals this season. Uh, that's first by far. The next closest is seven point seven. And there's only even seven teams going into this past week that were that weren't that weren't zero. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's to be commended. Now love it. Might have been that they used it all up in the first half, but still, even if they get no more for the rest of the season, that's still going to end up being a decent number. Heck yeah, it is. Because what have they, have they blocked twi- two? Field goals? I'm pretty sure it's two. I was looking at it from a percentage standpoint, but I'm well, louder sure. milk got one. Yeah, Dean and Lowry, Lowry got, got one, and Dean Lowry got one. Yeah, yeah. And they, I mean, this was field goals, not extra points. And technically, Mink got another one, but oh well, you're right. Yeah, ah, it's interesting, you know. Since Any since other? NFL, you know, t- took away those two points. <laughs> Any other special teams nuggets? Uh, those those were the main ones. A lot of them, a lot of the special team stuff is pretty much just you kind of know what they're doing. Hey, the Steelers returned turned one one punt for for a touchdown, which either at this point in the season, either have or you haven't. Yeah, for sure. And I'm not gonna ask you to start diving into Mike Tomlin post by because I know you're gonna save that for your Pittsburgh Standard Time podcast. I want people to check that out. But I do know his record's pretty darn good coming off of a bye week. So yeah, he's he's done all right. <laughs> so Dave, anything else? Has is are there any other stats, any other tidbits, nuggets? Empty the notebook. Is there anything okay? Else? I've got the the last thing, the last one. Most important of them all. Okay. Six. They've won six of their eight games. There it is. That's really what it all comes down to. Wins, losses. That's that's really all that matters. Those six wins still, even after week nine, that still puts the Steelers in first first place by themselves in the division for now. And it, it's kind of up to them as long as they keep as long as they keep taking care of their own business, they control that uh, for the rest of the season. And the Texans' loss on Thursday night to the Jets puts the Steelers in sole possession of second in the AFC. Because they that, were tied. That did before Sunday. What would have, who would have taken still, over? Um, Even with only two losses? Did Buffalo? Well, Buffalo won, but they have because Buffalo won. That would that would move Buffalo up to two. They'd be a half game up because they're even in the loss column, but one more in the win column. Okay, got it. But yeah, but Houston, 
Yeah, the, but that drops the 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 Houston down behind them. When do you start looking at that stuff? The conference stuff. Um, honestly, after Thanksgiving. Okay. Beginning of December, which this weeks. year happens to be the same time. Just when, when that's that's when that really starts to get going. For now, but it is really important to, to pay attention to the division. Yeah. Because no matter how great a division is or how crummy a division is, as long as you're still in in it in your division, you've got a chance. Perfect example. Cleveland Browns dropped to two and seven. Hey, They're tell not. tell you this. They ain't winning the division this year, no. okay? And that means they would have to win out just to get to ten and seven, which likely is not going to be a wild card. I mean, you could make a wild card at ten and seven, but you could even win ten games and not make the playoffs. So yeah. you're you're basically saying you can go ahead and wave the white flag and all all that, all those kind of things. But also, if you're sitting in a place like the NFC West, where my goodness, what is it? I think teams are either. You're, you know, four and four, five and four, four and five, all of them. Um, yeah. So they're they're all clustered together that it doesn't matter where they where they sit in the rest of the conference. What really matters is if, hey, if you can win your division, you're good to go. Yeah. So focus on division through November. Then you start looking. That's when I start looking bigger picture of across the rest of the conference. I'm not doing like the Mark Cabali who's already had it in week, in week two, week <laughs> one, he team. actually did it. If the playoffs started tomorrow, the Steelers would be <laughs> this seed and host this team. You know, exactly. you can look at it now for fun, but when yeah. it really gets serious is, is November you can, but it really is going to, come into shape more in this, in the month of December. There you go. And I want to make sure everyone goes and checks out Dave's articles. The the breaking down the game by the numbers is always a fantastic read in terms of game by game stuff. If you missed, you did a, what, what was that Dave Saturday or was it Friday that you did your rankings prior to the games? That was on Friday. Yeah. So go back and check that out. It's got a lot of the numbers that we just talked about. He's going to have an article out today, Monday as well. So go check all those things out. But that's it, Dave. Anything you want to add? Anything you want to plug? Bring on the second half. I'm just ready to get back into Steelers football. It was two weeks in a row of having sun football all day Weird. on Sunday with no Steelers. Yes. I mean, the bye week's bad enough, but two Sundays in a row? Yikes. That, 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 one, that one got to me. So, you know, get them back. Get a couple games, you know. Playing playing at 1 p.m. when God intended NFL football to be played Sunday at yep. 1 p.m. Those exactly. Saturday and Christmas Day games don't count. <laughs> All right, Dave. Thanks a lot, man. Until next time, take it easy. We'll talk. All right. Thanks, Jeff.